Since it was first given out in 1901, the Nobel Prize has recognized and rewarded many prominent individuals who have helped make the world a better place, and for the most part has done its job quite well. However, in such a long history, there are bound to be at least some people whose awarding was a bit controversial to say the least. I actually managed to find 20 of these people, all of whom in some way or another can be claimed to have not deserved the Nobel Prize. First, just to clear things up, one must have actually won the award to be on this list. So Adolf Hitler being nominated in 1939, for example, does not count. People can share a spot on this list, as long as they are awarded the same award for the same reasons. And lastly, to be fair, quite a few of the people on this list have accomplished great things, but all have at least some controversial actions to their name. So, let's get started. Number 20. Isaku Sato, Peace, 1974. Sato was president of Japan from 1964 to 1972, and won the Nobel Prize for signing a nuclear non-proliferation deal, which meant that Japan was in favor of nuclear disarmament in their country. However, he created controversy in Japan as he had said during his presidency that he was in favor of Japan having nuclear weapons, and he was seen to have blatantly lied about Japan's supposed non-nuclear policy. Some even speculated that he only signed the treaty to appeal to the USA. He was also a strong supporter of the US and the Vietnam War, and was actively in favor of bombing North Vietnam which was the second primary reason for his controversy. Manga artist Fungia Akatsuka even said that since Sato had won the Nobel Prize, he'd been unable to believe anything at all. Number 19. Rigoberta Menchu, Peace, 1992. Rigoberta Menchu won the prize for writing a book called I, Rigoberta Menchu, telling the story of the genocide of ethnic Guatemalans during the Guatemalan Civil War, as well as being a prominent activist for indigenous rights in the country. And when she received the prize, at first many people thought that she was a deserving winner. However, her book later caused controversy when anthropologist David Stoll claimed that some events in the book, like her allegedly witnessing her brother's murder, didn't actually happen the way she described, and that she'd altered them to further appeal to the public. She was subsequently accused as altering the events to promote leftist-leaning propaganda, and some have called for a Nobel Prize to be revoked. Number 18. Carlo Rubia Physics, 1984. Carlo Rubia was an Italian physicist who discovered the W and Z boson particles, but it wasn't that which was controversial, it was the manner in which he'd published his discovery. There was a second, smaller team, UA2, competing against his team, UA1, to discover the particles first. Initially, both teams found the W boson at the same time, but Rubia told the other team he wanted to compare results before publishing. He then published his own paper, without publishing the other teams. Later, when the other team found the Z boson particle a day before Rubia's team, Rubia went straight to the director of CERN and announced that his team had been the ones that first discovered the particle. He and his colleague won the prize, but there was never any mention of the team UA2. Number 17. Jimmy Carter, Peace, 2002. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter won the prize for quote-unquote decades of untiring effort to find peaceful solutions to international conflicts to advance democracy and human rights, and to promote economic and social development. However, the prize remarkably coincided with the U.S. government authorizing military force against Iraq, an invasion that would later violate international law and cause thousands of deaths. Speculation abounded that the Nobel Committee had simply awarded the prize to Carter as an indirect criticism of the Bush administration. Some have also criticized the award as Carter was only a one-term president whose achievements in campaigning for human rights were relatively unremarkable. Number 16. Cordell Hull, Peace, 1945. Hull, a U.S. Senator, won the prize the year World War II ended for his prominent role in establishing the United Nations, being one of the main driving forces behind its creation. Critics, however, pointed to an incident that he would rather forget. In 1939, he turned away a boat of 950 Jewish refugees seeking asylum in the USA, something that would have not happened had then-President Roosevelt would have been left with a decision, as he was reasonably in favor of the ship coming in. This resulted in the refugees failing to negotiate with Cuba, and the ship was made to return to Europe, where over a quarter of its passengers subsequently died in the Holocaust. Number 15. Johannes Fibiger, Medicine, 1926. A Danish scientist and medical doctor, Fibiger won the prize for medicine for determining that cancer in rats was caused by a parasitic worm. The two were proven unrelated only a decade later, 
and it was found that the cause of the cancer was actually a vitamin A deficiency. To add to the controversy, two years later, a Japanese scientist named Yamagiwa successfully found a link between coal tar and introducing a type of cancer, but Fibiger ended up winning the prize at his expense. The Nobel Committee has since even admitted that his findings were inaccurate. Also, ironically, Fibiger ended up dying of colon cancer. Number 14. Elihu Root, Peace, 1912. Root was a U.S. Senator in the decades preceding World War I, and won the award for a bunch of different mini-achievements, all under the category of helping to promote international justice and law. Unfortunately, he was also Secretary of War during the Filipino-American War, and was directly responsible for the brutal oppression of the Philippines' independence movement during that time. Having overseen the American op occupation, he played a prominent role in ensuring that the Philippines would remain a U.S. territory, and undertook a series of military actions which killed hundreds of thousands of Filipinos. The occupation was deemed uncivilized and unnecessarily abusive, and as a consequence, the Philippines would remain under U.S. jurisdiction for 30 years following the conflict. Number 13. Kofi Annan and the UN Peacekeeping Force, Peace 2001. This joint award was given to the Secretary General of the United Nations from 1997 to 2006 and its peacekeeping force for helping to create, quote-unquote, a more peaceful world. While this was not without merit, many pointed to the failure of the UN to stop genocides in Rwanda and the Balkans during this period, deeming Anand not worthy. He was also accused of inappropriately steering a multi-million dollar oil-for-food Iraqi deal towards a Swiss company that just happened to employ his son. Official charges were later dropped, but he was still criticized for allegedly scrutinizing the deal to determine whether his son's involvement was a conflict of interest. Number 12. Wangari Matai, Peace, 2004. Matai was an activist and environmentalist in Kenya who launched a mass campaign to stop erosion in Kenya by planting trees. She also pushed for more jobs and equal rights for women. Her win was still marred by controversy, though, over a remark that she made to a Kenyan newspaper. She claimed that AIDS did not originate from monkeys, as was widely believed, but was created by white scientists in an effort to control the black population in Africa. She later did apologize and has distanced herself from those remarks, but she still remarked after the incident to Time magazine that AIDS did not come from monkeys. Other criticism stemmed from the fact that she was more of an environmentalist and a tree planter rather than a peace activist. Number 11. Al Gore, Peace, 2007. Perhaps the biggest hypocrite to ever win a Nobel Prize, former Vice President Al Gore won in 2007 for his extensive work in promoting the issue of global warming in society. However, there were two major problems with this awarding. The first is that his documentary film about global warming, called An Inconvenient Truth, contained nine major errors, so profound that the UK actually doesn't allow distribution of the film in schools without accompanying guidelines that point out the mistakes. Worse still is that he didn't even practice what he preached. His 20-room and pool house were shown in 2006 to be eating up 22,619 kilowatts a month. That alone is double what the average American family goes through, in the, goes through in a year. And that is ludicrous, considering that one of Gore's most prominent positions was calling on Americans to conserve energy at home. Number 10. Daniel Gajduszek, Medicine, 1976. Gajduszek was an American doctor who won the Nobel Prize for his work on Kuru, which is an infectious disease spread by cannibalism, which occurred in the Papua New Guinea area. However, it was revealed 20 years later that Gajduszek had brought over 50 children back with him from his research trips in the South Pacific, promising them a better education and quality of life to get them to go with him. He was later found to have sexually assaulted and abused many of them. In 1996, one victim spoke out about how Gajduszek had molested him as a child, and at least six other victims came forward in the subsequent years. He confessed to his crimes, was convicted in 1998, but only served a five-year prison sentence and retained his Nobel Prize until his death in 2008. Number 9. Yitzhak Rabin and Shimon Peres, Peace, 1994. Rabin was the Israeli Prime Minister in the early 90s, and Perez was his foreign minister. They jointly won the prize for signing the Oslo Accords, which was essentially a peace agreement between Israel and Palestine, at war with each other at the time. However, both individuals had had very controversial pasts. Perez's controversy stemmed from the fact that he was nearly single-handedly responsible for developing Israel's nuclear weapons arsenal. He was also blamed for the Kana massacre, 
1996 shelling of a village with 800 Lebanese civilians who had gone to escape the fighting by Israeli troops. Rabin was also considered unsuitable for the award due to his past, as even during the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, when he was in the military, he was directly involved in the expulsion of Arabs from Israel. He would later become defense minister and was known for his aggressive crackdown on the First Intifada, an uprising of Palestinians against the Israeli occupation of the area. To top it all off, after the Oslo Accords had been signed as prime minister, he was later found to continue to authorize the building of Israeli settlements in Palestinian areas. Oh yeah, and the Oslo Accords, that didn't even turn out to be an effective peace solution at all. Number 8. Harold Zurhausen, Medicine, 2009. Comparatively lesser known than many on this list, Hausen was a German scientist who won for discovering that the HPV virus can cause cancer. Subsequently, though, allegations emerged that the prize was allegedly bought due to the involvement of a company called AstraZeneca. The company had a large stake in HPV vaccinations and was revealed to have strong links to two members of the Medicine Prize Selection Committee. Hausen's win would massively benefit the company as it would increase the demand for HPV vaccines, and it did. Eventually, the Swedish anti-corruption police was called in to investigate, and while they found nothing conclusive, many still believe that the award was bossed and it cast a dark shadow over the Nobel Prize. It also didn't help that AstraZeneca had only recently begun sponsoring the Nobel website. Number 7. The European Union, Peace, 2012 When the European Union was awarded the Peace Prize in 2012, many people immediately asked, for what? The answer was, quote-unquote, six decades of contributing to peace in Europe, despite the fact that Europe and the Euro were undergoing a severe economic crisis, and there were active protests and riots taking place in Greece, Spain, and Portugal. It was also said that the Union was suffering its most severe internal crisis since its inception at the time. Supporters of the award claimed that it was a commemoration of how the EU united countries after World War II and beyond, but many felt that the award simply came at the wrong time a time when the EU was accomplishing nothing worth such a prestigious award. British politician Nigel Farage even claimed that the award shows that the Norwegians really do have a sense of humor. Number 6. Barack Obama, Peace 2009 Speaking of mistimed awards, Barack Obama won a Nobel Prize for extraordinary efforts to strengthen international diplomacy and cooperation, despite only being in office for 12 days. The prize also stood out as there was no concrete achievement that it was being awarded for, and many have speculated that the Nobel Committee awarded Obama the award because his foreign policy was still much less aggressive than George Bush's. Even that, however, was debatable, as the war in Afghanistan was actually escalating during his presidency, and a drone campaign killing hundreds had recently commenced. Journalist Kristen Powers had also mentioned Obama's seeming willingness to attack Syria as another factor. The Nobel Committee has maintained the award, claiming that Obama captured the world's attention and brought hope for a better future. But many felt that hope was not nearly enough. Even Obama said himself in his acceptance speech that he did not deserve the prize. Number 5. Antonio Moniz, Medicine, 1949. Unbelievably, the person who invented a procedure to remove part of the brain to cure mental illness won a Nobel Prize. Moniz was credited with inventing the prefrontal lobotomy, which was used in the 1940s and 50s to cure schizophrenia and learning difficulties, among other things, in patients. It involved the removal of the prefrontal cortex, an area in the brain that controls cognitive behavior, decision-making, and personality. This occurred despite a large backlash, even at that time, over lobotomies being unethical. Lobotomies were found to cause both behavioral and personality deterioration, and could send patients into permanent vegetative states. The process was eventually outlawed in the USSR and the USA after the deaths of some patients and the ultimate realization that lobotomies cause more harm than good, but not after 20,000 of them being conducted in the US alone. Still, the Nobel Committee has defended the award, stating that there were no suitable alternatives at the time for curing mental illnesses. Interestingly, Moniz was actually shot by one of his patients in 1939 and had to use a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Number 4. Nobody, Peace 1948. Yes, nobody won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1948. This was very controversial still, as the award was nearly unanimously tipped to go to Mohandas Gandhi, 
the leader of India's peaceful struggle for independence from Britain. Unfortunately, Gandhi was assassinated before the selection of the winner. As such, the Nobel Committee declined to give him the award posthumously and declared that there was no suitable living candidate. This meant that Gandhi never received any Nobel Prize at all. Still, that could have been let slide if the Nobel Committee hadn't gone back in its rules in 1961, where it awarded Doug Hammarskjöld, former Secretary General of the United Nations, with the Nobel Peace Prize after he had died in a plane crash that same year. It remains the only time a person has received a Nobel Prize after their death. Number 3. Henry Kissinger, Peace, 1973. You know that you've given the award to the wrong person when the person who shares his award declines to accept it. Henry Kissinger was the U.S. Secretary of State in the early 70s and won for his efforts to end the Vietnam War by undertaking peace work in South Vietnam with Le Duc Tho, a North Vietnamese leader. It was rather unsuitable, however, because Kissinger was suspected to be behind the secret U.S. bombing of neighboring Cambodia that lasted six years, ending in 1975. Critics also claimed that the award was premature, as peace had not even been yet achieved in South Vietnam, and when North Vietnam invaded the country two years after the award, it seemed that Kissinger's work had been declared void. There is also evidence pointing to Kissinger's involvement in a U.S. governmental operation called Operation Condor, a mid-1970s campaign of kidnapping and murder amongst various South American secret services. There is also evidence showing that Kissinger supported the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974. As it stood, two Norwegian Nobel Committee members actually resigned to protest Kissinger's win. Number 2. Yasser Arafat, Peace, 1994. The third signer of the Oslo Accords to win the Nobel Prize, and also the most controversial. When he won, Time magazine said that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Called the worst man to ever win a Nobel Prize, Arafat was accused of being a terrorist with a long history of actions promoting violence against Israelis. Arafat was the founder of a group called Fatah, whose goal was a complete eradication of Zionistic or Jewish existence, and was allegedly responsible for many bombings, hijackings, and assassinations from the 60s to the 80s. Fatah's most famous attack is generally thought to be the 1972 massacre of the Israeli Olympic team. Later on, after leaving the group, Arafat went on to become a representative of the Palestinian government and ended up traveling the world. However, just like the previous two signers of the Oslo Accord, his diplomatic accomplishments were nothing special, as the Oslo Accord was ineffective in ending the Arab-Israeli conflict. Number 1. Fritz Haber, Chemistry, 1918 there have been many people on this list who have affected many lives, but Fritz Haber is simply unparalleled in this regard. Haber won the prize for managing to synthesize ammonia, which was a great accomplishment as this is used very often to aid food grown with chemical fertilizer, something that had been sought after for more than a century. It has been claimed that this discovery helped grow the world's population so much that two out of five people today wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for Haber. But when compared to what Haber did in the past, that seems almost irrelevant. You see, Haber was the director of the Institute for Physical Chemistry in Germany, who was, among other things, producing poisonous chlorine gas. This poison would go on to kill 1.3 million people during World War I, and Haber not only played a critical role in getting the poison developed, but he was also a lobbyist for its usage in combat. It got so bad that his wife, also a scientist, committed suicide 10 days after the first instance of chemical warfare. But it didn't stop there. Most of Haber's research after the war led to the creation of the Zyklon A gas, which was the, which was the predecessor to Zyklon B, the gas used by the Germans to eradicate the Jews during the Holocaust. Millions of them were sent into the gas chambers to meet their end by Zyklon B. The saddest irony of all was that Haber himself was a Jew, and they never lived to see the day where the gas would start being used. It is true that Haber was far from pure evil, and that his intentions were nowhere near as malicious as many on this list, and his accomplishments were truly amazing and important to many, but regardless, Haber's work still notoriously impacted millions of people, so I feel that he deserves the top spot on this countdown.